Imagine a conscious contact with God so strong that no matter what you are doing or not doing, that no matter what your kids are up to or not up to, and that whether you've got the person of your dreams or they're just not cooperating, that you are happy, content, and at peace. A space where everyone else's thoughts, attitudes, and actions are beautiful and exactly as they are supposed to be. Well, this is the space where I like to play. My name is Misha Z, and this is today's Bitch Slap. Join me as I shed light on the thoughts, actions, and attitudes that are causing you pain, and we train our minds to go to the capital S inner self, the joy that is waiting for us, the God within. Cord to the cloud. Recording in, pro- in progress. There you go. All right. Francis, good morning. And it's Francis, is it Pish? Piche. P- Piche. Piche. Yeah, Piche. yeah. There's never like, I wish, you know, you can put the accent on everything, but not always. So it's Piche. Piche. You know, I was originally going to say that, but I was like, I'll sound ignorant if I do that. But see, your intuition was right. Yes. I um, follow it. Yeah. I love that thought. Um, so you're, um, I asked you before we hit record where you were and you're obviously French, French Canadian nationality. What's that? French Canadian, French Canadian. Yeah. Huh? That's a big difference. Big, yeah, difference. big difference. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so born in Montreal. So tell me what's the big difference about between when you say that, what comes to your mind? The big difference. I can explain you with one word, and I think you're going to explain it. You're going to understand it. Uh, so one time I was uh, asking some French people, because they always, they always laugh about how we speak uh, and that we speak like more peasant. And then I said, oh, really? All right. So I said, just tell me how you say Spider-Man. Because in Montreal, if it's Spider-Man, it's Spider-Man, or we're going to translate it, then we're going to say, um, araignée. So, you know, there's, it's like French. Or it's English, and uh, and so I asked I asked him. I said, "How do you say Spiderman?" And he said, "Spiderman, Spiderman." So I said, "Do you want to be saved by Spiderman, or you want to be <laughs> saved by Spiderman?" So he laughed. So that's the difference, just in one word, because he would say he cheers to that, right? And now you know. It's like, oh, are you Spiderman or Spiderman? <laughs> Spiderman, and I love that. Who do I want to be saved by? Clearly, Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or Spider Man, you know, <laughs> doing the shopping and the parking, and that's that, that's all they speak. So I'm like, wow, that's very uh, that's very manly. That's really good. <laughs> that's <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that, but you know, no, ask, but clearly... ask who you want to be saved by. <laughs> so, oh, oh so now God. you know. <laughs> now know. Like, oh, you're Spider Man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> are you so you're in laguna beach are you permanent permanently in the u.s right now and have been for a while or just visiting well i do i uh, i do have a visa for five years uh, because i have a business that's established here so i can always renew it every year uh, every five years which is really beautiful and amazing so my permanent address is in uh, vancouver and and now, you know, thanks to thanks to COVID, I stayed uh, a little bit longer. And uh, I mean, I, I can stay as long as I want, really. That's that's what that's that's the beauty. Yeah. So, uh, you know, every time that I travel and I come back and I show my visa, I'm very proud because it's automatic access. They're like, OK, good. There you go. Yeah. Well, you know, no well, questions well. asked. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And this. um what percentage of Canada is French Canadian where there's you're speaking French and that deep French roots? Mm-hmm. If I'm saying, that uh, right. well, I mean, there's uh, I believe that it's, I don't, I don't know if it's going to be recorded. I, I, I think there's 11 provinces uh, and some territories, but in Quebec, that's uh, one of the major provinces. I think I'd say, you know, you have Quebec, Ontario and uh, British Columbia. Those are the major provinces in canada and so i would say percentage wise it's hard to say i I think we there's about nine million people in quebec um and 37 in canada the whole country so you know you can imagine that california is actually as big as as the whole country of canada yeah and then um in quebec i'd say maybe 
75% of it would speak French. So let's say nine, seven million out of 37. So maybe a good 25%, 20%, 20% maybe. Okay. And is Rough there... estimate, but you know, yeah. in Montreal, most of the people in Montreal would speak, uh, they can definitely speak English. There's even a part of it that's uh, the English part of of, uh, of Montreal, but if you look at the whole province in itself, that would be more French than, than English. Yeah. Okay. And your your um, your uh, sociology or um, geography professor might be a little <laughs> upset right now that you didn't know the exact numbers. I I know. Like now, I feel, but it's uh, <laughs> it's it's been a while. I mean, I know. <laughs> of yeah. course. I'm just. I, I, I'm usually good with numbers. I think I know my population pretty well. Like in general, I always like to know like what the, how many how many people are living, you know, in the greater area of a big city, and then the city itself. But you know, it's always fascinating to see the concentration of people just in these little spots. Which you know, if you look at Canada, this it's a huge country, but all people are at the bottom of the line. Like that's where all people are concentrated. Right and on the border there. North, yeah. yeah, right on the border. And is that a resource or just uh, a resource? That's where the most resources are in the country, or is that a uh, climate? Climate. Thing? I like, think it's yeah. mostly climate. Yeah, that would yeah. make sense. And also, you know, if you look at the path, you know, just where it started with uh, Saint Lawrence River, you yeah. know, every all the exports and imports were coming through that, and then you know it went up to up to Ontario, and then you have the big Great Lakes. So it's that's what we share with you guys. Uh, you know, around Michigan and all of it. So uh, we share these these great lakes. And then uh, I, 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 that's one of the reasons. And if you look at Vancouver on the other side, the west side of Canada, then it's pretty much the same thing. It's, you know, it's, you know, where the uh, Burrard Inlet is and that where all the, the boats are coming from Pacific Asia. <clears throat> so in America, you've got, well, historically, like the North, the South, right? The the there's the Confederacy. What do we call the North? The um, the Union, let's say. Yeah. Um, is there that? Has there been that sort of tension between, uh, like French speaking? Uh, historically, yes, a long time ago. But yeah, it was the Upper Canada and Lower Canada. So that's how that's how they called it. And uh, and then I think what united the whole country is the uh, the railway. So. Uh, so Canada was established in 1867. Okay. But then uh, if you look at, it's really a, a history for me right now, like going backwards, I think it was in 1760 that there was a, a war between French and the Brits and uh, we lost. And I think since, since then that, that became predominantly a little bit more uh, Anglophone, if you will. Yeah. But we you know yeah. that that's where people wanted to keep their rights and so at one point, you know, even not too long ago, I think it was in 1995, there was a referendum to see if people wanted to separate themselves from Canada. And, uh, and then it, that the, it was very, very close. I think it was 49, 51%. What? Yeah. So it, we, so it stayed, it stayed, but you know, there's a, there was a lot of controversy as well, because I, I think that the government of Canada spent a lot of money to, try to convince all uh, people not to not to separate and of course some caravans of people but <clears throat> it was very very close very close so that was the closest i think that it was uh, for the uh, separation or the independence if you how, how how old were you at that at that point i was uh, i think 16 17 i remember yeah. that you know I, w- I wasn't able to vote at that time and uh, but everyone was i think you know for us it's 18 years old yeah. you can vote so it was, it was something that everyone was watching. Like that yeah. was pretty important. Yeah. Were you, did you have opinions about it at the time or were you like, let me go out and hang at out with my time, friends? At the time I had my opinion and uh, I think I've, I've had the chance to travel. I was, I think I was more pro independence in a way, but not, not in the way that I, I felt that it was a, you know, saying, oh, you guys are wrong or, or whatnot. It was more about preserving uh, the culture. But then at the same time, over time, you know, with all the travels that I've done, I think it was, I've realized that 
especially when I went to Sweden, because I studied five months in Sweden. And what, fa- what was fascinating about the country is that there were only eight or nine million people and they were speaking many languages, mm-hmm. Swedish, Finnish, English, sometimes German, French. And you're thinking, wow, you know, these guys are, are, are awesome. And they never, and never felt that they wanted to preserve their culture because, you know, the, at the time, Honeywell was a company from uh, Volvo, uh, many big companies that were established in, in Sweden, a small country, almost the size of Quebec. And so I felt, you know, if you really, if you, if you travel a lot and, and you, you, you will by default love your culture and you'll never be scared of losing it because yeah. if you look at the Swedes, they, they spoke five languages. And so, so I kind of gave a different perspective and I felt, you know, you can definitely be integrated. And, you know, I, I would say at, before you, you, you are worried about your own culture, make sure you live your own culture, you know, <laughs> and, and then, and that, and, and then in that way, then you don't need to worry about it because if you're, if you love your culture, of course, like the, the people that the kids are going to speak French and whatnot. So, yeah, but I mean, what I remember, what I remember for me is, is that at the time the politicians were a little bit too focused on, I felt putting like, okay, this is the bad side. Well, I don't know if I, if it's real, that's what I remember. But yeah. for me, what was important is- Good guy, if bad I would have guy been, kind of a thing. Yeah, and if I would have been a politician at the time, and I remember saying that to my friends, I said, let's not even focus on independence and just say, that's what, what's going to happen. But first, let's focus on economy. Let's focus mm-hmm. on this, let's focus on that. And then uh, that's why I think they, they lost at one point, uh, years after when they tried again, because it's, it's like, let's make sure that the base is strong before you can even think about that. And so, yeah. uh, but then of course, you know, these politicians were from a, an era that, you know, there, there's some pride to, to talk about it, but I think that's the reason why they lost because they were too focused on that versus saying, let's, before we talk about anything, let's just have a good economy. Let's have this. And then yeah. we'll introduce that. So they, the, the party lost in the election. And I think that's the reason why, because they put too much emphasis on that. It's, it was, mm. it's almost like you have to have a timing for it. Yeah. But right now, I mean, I'm a citizen of the world and <laughs> I think, yeah, it's, and, you know, it's when you travel and you see, there's no, there's a beauty <laughs> of different cultures. And I think mm. what's important is really to integrate ourselves together and just, appreciate and being curious about hey you know like what, what are you doing and then you know i moved in vancouver and i it was a different culture you know just in terms of a the number of asian people the number of of uh, and then you have the the brit the the british people initially and now you know yeah. the so, so it was great like i mean i love traveling i love cultures yeah i i think that's such a powerful statement um you know i like the concept of don't you know, if you embody your, your, uh, culture, you know, and then you don't have to have fear of losing it. And then there's the exactly. illusion of losing it anyway. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but, um, how powerful clearly traveling has been on you and the sort of the, you know, there's the concept sort of elusive, but that we're all one. Right. And if we can, exactly. Yeah. I, so, I will always remember Michelle's, uh, I'm pronouncing your your your, yes. your name right, right? Yes. So I was uh, when I went to Sweden, it was really amazing because uh, that experience, exchange student experience, was that in that city called Lund, or at the time there was 90, 90,000 people in the city, and forty five thousand were students. Mm. And uh, and then for us, there was a lot of different cultures, and I will rem- always remember one moment where it was a dinner. And at the table, there was a Polish guy, French guy, uh, you know, woman and, and man, uh, UK, Germany, like different. And, and, and all we talked about was pretty much the same thing. And we all connected with the same values, which is freedom, uh, compassion, uh, mm. dreams, and uh, it was just fascinating that, you know, for me, it was the first time that I saw that, hey, you know, I'm talking about the same thing. I'm from a different country, but we were all, all want the same. Mm-hmm. We're all united. Mm-hmm. And so it was really cool to see that. To, and then I felt, man, we can all be together. You know, mm-hmm. we, we all have these same human values. Mm-hmm. And it was really cool to see. And so I, it gave me a lot of 
pleasure to see that and hope and say, wow, such a beautiful human race that we are. Like we just, we talk about the same thing. Yeah. You know, we could be friends with anyone. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's it's great. Deep down, um, right? Like when yeah. you just, when you put aside the religion, when you put aside politics, you, you put that all aside. Mm. And I think that there was, this, I heard that there was a study, of, I don't know if it was uh, with uh, Eineken, the beer that uh, kind of, or I'm probably, maybe I'm wrong, but th- there was a, a, maybe a TV show where people were not talking about politics and not talking about religion. And they all got along very, very well until they introduced the subject of, of that. And then people started to have some uh, <laughs> friction. Yeah, yeah, friction, cool. which, which to be honest, if I compare, if I compare Canada to us, I mean, there's a lot of beautiful things that I love in both countries. One, I think that's very strong as a value for Canada is uh, tolerance. Because there's so many cultures, I think they, there was a magazine once that they say, well, who's a Canadian? Like, if you can, and then there was different, you know, they took a, uh, a little cartoon and they just draw like what it would look like. And so you had part of it East Indian, part of it French Canadian, like it was all different. The unity was really the tolerance because everyone's in the same melting pot. Now, if you look at US, I think one of the value that's really cool is freedom. Mm. And I think the people really want to, they stand by their freedom. And so for me, like, I, I, I just wish that in the world that people can talk freely about the side of politics that they have, the, the religion is to me, it's more about why, why are you talking this way? What makes you think that this is, this is so good. Just in a, being curious, not yeah. judging, just being curious and say, Oh, yeah. that's interesting. I didn't see it from that angle. Yeah. I see where you're coming from. And uh, I'll give you a, a really cool example that again in terms of culture really changed my perspective because in sweden they told us that uh, i don't know exactly when i i'm not sure if it's still being done but the woman the the mothers Mm -hmm. when they go to the grocery store they would leave leave their children in the stroller outside the grocery store and so at first what and they say yeah of course because for them children are jewels of 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 the economy jewels of of the society and so they would never ever even do anything against them because they're Mm. so precious Mm. and so what happened is that the mothers that are leaving their babies in the stroller other mothers are taking care of 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 the babies while the mothers Mm. is inside the grocery store so it's it's almost Mm. like yeah of course like i'm gonna take care of your kid you take care of mine i do my thing i come back everyone's protected but at first I thought, can I imagine that like in Canada or US, you would, no be, you would maybe go to jail. They would say, are you kidding me? Like you left your kid. But, but the mentality was so different that I understood what it is to have a different culture. And who are you to judge? If you're brought up in that environment, that's how you think since, you're, since they won. You yeah. would not even you would not even think that it's wrong. You would just say, "Yeah, of course." Like we would never do that. Like even a criminal would not even touch the baby because that's part of ingrained in their in their mind. Yeah. And but so with- so now when you do that, you're thinking, "Okay, so who am I to judge?" Because if I was brought up in that same mold, I would probably have very different values, very different opinion, very different things. So when you meet other people from different countries, <clears throat> it's good to just be really neutral and say. Hmm. Why are you guys thinking this? Curiosity. Way? Come at it with yeah. curiosity. What what can I learn here? What can what can what can this add to my experience versus I need to change your way of thinking? Exactly. And uh, and I think that personally I feel and that's just my opinion, but I think that America needs to be a little bit more like this. It's it saddens me to see the polarity of people that are labeling themselves, oh, okay, you're red, you're blue. Yeah. Okay. So, and 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 it's almost it feels like it's if you're this scholar, then you will never change. And you're that type of person. And I'm yes. thinking, well, <laughs> that's just one politician this time. <laughs> you know, it's, it represents a party. It's not a hundred percent of all the things. So there's good and bad in everything. And so let's just be a little bit more curious. And, and what's the end goal? Everyone wants to be happy. Everyone wants to have a good economy. Everyone wants yeah. to get along. Nobody wants to hurt each other. So then who's the best for that? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's my opinion. But I think so. I feel like uh, it's it's important that people, you know, are not putting 
putting labels on everything and say, this is your category. Don't talk to me. Hey, you know, we're human beings. So it goes back to, you know, the, yeah. the melting pot of all the people at the same table. And I think down deep down people want the same, they want the same thing. Yeah, I would agree. And I generally speaking, I mean, you have some outliers, but I think the, of course, you know, the, the, the 20 to the 80%, that band in there is the, the bell curve. You know, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, most, most of us are all in the same two uh, standard deviation. And then yeah. of course there's some, you know, people far remote on that line, but I mean, I think it's normal. It's also normal. Yeah. And then there's room for them too. Right. So <laughs> um, exactly for them. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I think, I think, well, I want to, um, we can circle back around to this, but, uh, I, I just wanted to touch on, on a little bit of what you do. And I like your, the resilient, I'm looking over here at your, at your um, website and resilience, the resilience element or RE you've got, it's like yeah. breaking bad for any Americans or, you know, the breaking bad TV show. Uh, I heard about it. So what is it? So why is that? Okay. Oh, well, it's because breaking bad, they have the, they do the B, I think B E. So they do like an elemental like an element as well. An oh. elemental sign. They logoized it or whatever. Wow. It's really cool. So your R E is reminiscent of that. Good. Well, I wonder when did this, this show start? Because I mean, this logo for me was started five years ago. So maybe, oh. I was... <laughs> maybe yeah, maybe you. <laughs> That's ahead. why you go talking know. right now. Yeah, no, yeah. Matter. No, but, but, but you know what's interesting is that R E when you uh, when you look on the periodic table, it means rhenium. And uh, rhenium, that's, that's the reason and why it became the logo, because rhenium was, at the time, the element that had the highest boiling point of oh. all the elements. So it, it was the most resilient element of all. Yeah, so I, I love felt, that. And, and, and they also use it to launch rockets. And so launching dreams, launching, yeah. you know, there's, there's something associated with it. And it's also a, uh, you, it's a byproduct. So it's not like readily available like that. It's a byproduct of different things. And so... For me, when I describe resilience, I, I don't think you can say that re resilience is resilience. So what is it made of? And so mm. it, it's, there's five components to it. And, and to me, if you have a goal, if you have a big dream and you want to know what the components are to, to achieve this dream and this goal, well, there's five components. And the five components are, first one, clarity. I need to know where you, where you are, where you want to go. Uh, the second one is conviction. So really the reasons why you want to accomplish something, if, if you don't have enough motivation, then that's not, as soon as you have an obstacle, you're, you're just going to give up. And then the third one is certainty. You know, is that in your mind a certainty that this is going gonna, is gonna to happen? Or that if something, if your goal is not achieved, that the certainty is that there's always a lesson and that it's going to lead you to something beautiful. Mm. Um, then the, the fourth one is commitment. So obviously you got to take some actions and on a daily basis. And I think when I describe commitment, what I'm seeing in general, when people are establishing their really resolutions in the beginning of the year is that their commitments are too big, meaning, mm. you know, it's too big of a chunk. Like they, they would not do any, any, they would not go to the gym for a year. And then they would say, Oh, I'm going to go three times a week. And that's going to yes. be an hour each. And you're like, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. You know? Yeah. And then, I think after two weeks, 92% of the people are actually just giving up on their, on their resolution. So just let's have small chunks that with the compounding effect, effect of, of, of that, that's going to create your goal and that's going to be easy to accomplish. And most of the time, you're just going to be motivated to spend way more than 15 minutes a day on something, as yeah. an example. And then the, the fifth one is, is courage, because you can do all of these things right, know where you're going, where you are, where you're going, have a lot of reasons why motivations, and then, you know, have this certainty factor. Certainty factor could also be, imagine if you had this certainty as a baby that knows they're going to, they're, that know they're going to walk, you know, they never question, they know they're going to walk, but they could yeah. fall a million times, but in their mind, of course, I'm going to walk, I'm not going to crawl, I'm not going to say, oh, you know, I've, I've, I've tried it all, I'm stopping. You know, I'm that's such a crawl. great analogy. I love right? that. But for them, yeah. it's, of course, of course, of I'm going to walk. Yeah. Of I'm gonna... So I'm, imagine if, if in your mind, you're like, of course, I'm going to do it. Of course, I'm committed to it. And so that's, that's certainty. And then, you know, when you do commitment, then of course, it's going to lead you to, uh, to your goal as well. And sometimes you hit the wall. 
And yeah. that's where courage comes in. That's where the science of happiness comes in, where, you know, you can do the things to kind of raise your vibration back to why you're doing it. And you can slow down and, and rest and recoup and uh, do the things that are really helping you in terms of your mind, your body and your soul. So it mm. could be just, you know, meditating, exercising, <clears throat> but it's all based on the science of happiness. So those five components, when you have it, I would, I would, I would ask anyone challenge me. Like if you have these five components, I think you will definitely achieve your goals. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I love that. You know, what's interesting. It just thought just occurred to me. Um, I get to interview a lot of people, obviously for my podcast and I, and I, I get to interact as, as I'm sure you do with lots of different s- styles of people. And there's such a, there's such a, um, you know, you just talked about meditating and, and, and exercising and it in a way that's like, yeah, that's natural. It's what you do. That's just part of the routine. Right. And how then you've got sort of this, it's, it's very clear sides of that lifestyle. I don't know if lifestyle is the right word or ideal or mentality mindset, call it what you will, but you would have then, it's people are either like, oh yeah, I just do it. That's what you do. That's how you have a good life, right? It's part of what I do. And then you've got other people that it, that is such a, how could I say it? Um, there's resistance to it, right? Like, like it's, uh, if you were to talk to someone about it, it would be a, a, a very elusive ideal for them. Does that make sense when I say that? Yeah, I think, I think I understand. And yeah, uh, Part of what you're saying definitely i mean for me it's just natural it is natural i've never realized that i'm talking this way but i mean i've been meditating for at least six years i think if i look at my stats you know because i'm using an insight timer okay. probably over 2000 three 2250 days uh, that i've done at least one session of meditation so and and the biggest thing that i've done also in terms of meditation was the 10 day silent meditation in the south africa which called which is called vipassana and i see so for, for me a day without meditation is uh, is not the same i see so many benefits because you know it's, it helps me to slow down to prime my brain to visualize what i want and it's not always the same so sometimes i would i would do guided most of the time it was not but i'm also uh, a student of uh, Dr. Joel Dispenza, who is yeah. phenomenal in its its own way for creating the future that you really want, creating it, uh, not being, uh, and also what I'm doing with Proctor Gallagher Institute, which is the same thing. It's you, you're you're seeing yourself with the goal already accomplished. So yeah. the meditation for me is that time, my time to start my day, so, and and even before retiring uh, and going to sleep. So this is uh, I love. I just love this lifestyle and. I think I heard that Ray Dalio, one of the most success, successful people in terms of uh, wealth management, is meditating at least two times a day, 30 minutes. And he's yeah. a very busy guy. Yeah. So to spend an hour a day for someone that's really successful, and usually the argument is, well, I don't have the time. Yeah, time. But the thing is, it slows down everything. And then instead of panicking or taking actions on the wrong things, you just have way more clarity. And with clarity, you're saving time. You're like, you're, you're a supernatural person. So that's, that's how I I see meditation. I would guess that six years ago, you would have not had that. There would have been more resistance or I don't know if contempt's the right word. Um, What's, what is the word uh, when you, uh, you question the viability of something. Yeah. Maybe there's some uh, skepticism. Skepticism. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So clearly something happened six ish years ago. You start meditating, you develop the resilience element, like what's going on six years ago. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think I started to meditate a year before I created the resilience element. And, and the funny thing is that talking about commitment, you know, when I said a small, small little chunk, at the time, for whatever reason, I felt that 10 minutes was too short and 15 too long. <laughs> it's just like five, it's just five minutes difference, right? So I decided I decided to start with 13 minutes. I'm like, I'm gonna set it at 13. I've been in sales all my life. I guess, yeah, I'm gonna cut in the middle, like 13 minutes. 
And uh, two minutes, I can't believe it. But it was the time that I needed to remove the resistance and say, okay, I'm going to do that. Sometimes days were, that's why I like inside timer. It's just a gong. It's just, so you can time it. You know, if you have three minutes, you have three minutes and that's it. Yeah. But uh, so, so I started to do that. And then a year after, I mean, if I go personal, I, you know, I've been engaged twice. The first time it was when I was 24, I think. And three months before the wedding, my fiance just kind of talked to me in the living room. She said, I, I want to cancel the wedding. Mm. And I, I thought, wow. And that was when I started a new job at Xerox, which is kind of the, the uh, I call it the army of sales because it, they drill you. And if you're not good, you're out. So I had a lot of pressure to, to be good. And then I had that, that happens at the same time. And I was studying, you know, studying the specs of photocopiers, which was far from what I wanted to think about. And I wish that I was on, on the construction site, just, you know, not thinking. And uh, so I was in my cubicle learning everything and I had to go through that. So that's just one thing that happened. And then years later, maybe 10 years, I, I got engaged again. And, uh, and it didn't work out. And five years after that, I saw, I met this person and we thought that we can rekindle the relationship and it didn't work out. So maybe a month or two after I decided, you know what, I can I, mean, I was talking to my coach. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm good now. I've moved on. This is my time to, to work on my dreams and do what I'm good at. And so I, the idea at the time was I'm going to speak about communication and sales. I always love public speaking, done some stand up like maybe 10 times just because I want to explore different ways of talking. And, and then I said, what about the big dream? I said, what do you mean? And then, and I was a bit upset that he asked me that question. I'm thinking we've been talking for a year at least. And now you're asking me this questions. Why are you asking me this question? So, you know, cause I want, I, I thought in my mind, I'm going to work every day on, on, on my goal and I'm going to create this course in 21 days. And now he's saying, what about the big dream? And I'm thinking, are you listening to me? And he said, okay, so I'm going to ask you to do something that you will not like. Do you want to do it? <laughs> like, what is that question? You're asking me and you're not telling me what it is. You, he's like, yeah, do you want to do it? So maybe because of frustration, I'm like, sure, I'll do it. What do you want me to do? He's like, I want you to do nothing for three days. I'm like, I just told you I wanted. He's like, hey, you just said you would. All right. So what am I supposed to do? <laughs> He's like, nothing. And so what, 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 does, what does that look like? It's like, well, no journaling, no looking at the TV, social media. And then I was asking, can I meditate? Can I, yes, you can. Can you, can I see my friends? Yes. Can I go in na nature? Yes. Uh, but then I said, well, what about my clients? You know, I was in real estate at the time. It's like, you're, you're sneaky. He's like, I just don't want you to start anything. If they call you fine, but don't, just don't have your open houses. Just don't do anything. Okay, cool. And then just before I left, I said, and I want you to do another thing. And um, I want you to go in five years from now in your agenda. And I want you to write this. Uh, okay. What do you want me to write? It's like, you're going to write, this is the day that I die. So what do you want to do in between Francis? What's, what's the point of living? Why are you here? What's your legacy? Who do you want to become? Who do you want to be with? And then, you know, I saw my big, big dream, what I wanted to do. And if there was a needle, it went bam, like in my big dream. And then he said, I don't want, I don't want the answer. Let's talk in three days. And uh, so now I'm just left with this idea. And by the way, my coach at the time decided to do the, the same exercise which was really cool so we were actually, actually i think we were three people not doing anything and uh well, let, let me ask you a question quick yeah Can i ask you a question quick yeah that <clears throat> you just said that moment of the big dream did that happen in that moment that he was like right oh yeah i mean i, I mean i knew that i knew that if you know if, seriously if i and if i even would ask you or any people listening if you know you know you have five years if that's the case what do you want to do? So my mind, I'm like, I don't want to leave this world without achieving my dreams. Like, of course, like, and then I knew that it, it was instant, but then he didn't want me to answer that question right away either. And yeah. so I started to ruminate what is it exactly that I wanted to do. And so 
during that three days, you know, you can journal. <laughs> so you get the ideas and then I would just pray, please, I just want to keep Let that one, back. you know, I can't like, <laughs> you know, can I put it in my mind somewhere and you keep it, you know, and you then, but then that. it was oh recycling. God. It's almost like it was filtering and then some ideas would, would leave, some would stay, but there was a predominant thought that stayed. And uh, I was so looking forward to jot everything down as soon as I, it, this exercise is done. And, you know, I, it was a very interesting because the first day when they gave me that exercise, I thought, you know, I'm leaving the, my coach's office and I'm thinking, what am I going to do now? <laughs> so uh, I remember driving and saying, oh, maybe I can go for an ice cream. Never, I never go for an ice cream, but I thought, you know, I just saw a sign. And then I'm, I'm, I'm stopping and there's a huge line for people to wait for their ice cream cones. And I'm probably the only one with a big smile on my face because I'm like, hey, I'm waiting. This is good. I have nothing to do. You know, great. 45 minutes that I don't have to worry about. <laughs> so and uh, and then I remember walking on the streets and people would look at me and say, hi. You know, just they, they I guess I had a different vibe. And I remember even meeting a friend and he said, you're so calm. You like you're so calm. Like, hey, by the way, do you have time for another hour? I'm like, yeah, you know, and 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 I was so present because I had like I had nothing to do. I had no thinking of things to do. I, my exercise was you do nothing. So then I'm present. I'm fully present with what's like, happening. What's next? I, what's coming? My or just open minded too to let's see what. I like it. There's no work to be done. Like it's clear you do nothing. Okay. So and then what? Like I enjoy this moment. And so it was very, very powerful. And then uh, three days after, you know, in my mind, I thought, okay, so if I have only five years, which five years is a great timeline, because if I say you have a week, you'd say, uh, very good to meet you for the podcast. Sorry. Got to go. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, I have other things to do, or if it's <laughs> yeah. three months, six, you know, you might say, I'm going to sell everything, I'm going to travel, going to do everything I want. Yeah. But then at one point, if it's after a year, let's say you had a year of traveling, you do every, you go everywhere. Yeah. Then what? Then what? Then yeah. what? So then you're thinking, okay, so there's something bigger that I want to do. I want to leave something. And then to me, I thought, okay, so for any dreams that people would have or that I want, I've seen that the successful people always had at one point or the other a choice to make a, between giving up or continuing. And I thought, I want to share this mindset, this mindset of resilience to make sure that, you know, you're, you keep on going, even though you have obstacles and losses in your life and setbacks. Hold, That's, and then, yeah. Yeah. Hold that thought. Um, let's go back to, to you and there's two other people. So you, your coach, your coach is going to do this with you. And then there was a third person. Yeah, it was another of his clients. And, uh, and, and then we all, it was all very powerful, very powerful for all of us. Are you guys shifted. communicating? Oh, uh, I don't know the other guy. My coach is still my coach. So we, uh, I remember that for him too, it was something that changed. Uh, you just, you just realize why, why are you doing what you're doing? Yeah. And what, what does it matter? You know? Yeah. Uh, and so for me, I decided, okay, I'm going to build this company. And then I, I just knew that it was resilience, but it I didn't know. In. Yeah. It, it, it was, it was clear, so much clarity, uh, which is an exercise that I highly, highly encourage people to do. And if you say you don't have time, what's the point of living? <laughs> if, what's, what's, why are you here? Why are you, you know? here? Yeah. You know? And, 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 and really things can, can be delayed. And we would, you know, if you really had that life sentence, you would take that time. You would. So, you know. You know, one thing I'm working on in myself right now um, or is so, you know, I'm building new things, podcast. I just did this summit. I've got other bigger, broader ideas. And, and it can be so easy to feel like I'm behind. I don't have time. Um, I will start comparing where I am to where you are all these things. And I love what you said, because I'm, I'm trying to like, if we can stay in the moment, which is so powerful and, and trust that, you know, I'm right where I'm supposed to be and everything's happening when it's supposed to, I, I'd like this idea too, that there's the illusion that I can make it happen faster or slower. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, 
what am I trying to say? It's early. <laughs> I guess uh, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm literally have been writing down, you know, what, what if there was no hurry? What, what if things can be delayed? That's you said yeah. that. And I love that. It's like, Hey, wait, I can feel like there's this urgency that these things have to be done. And if they don't, it's the be all end all and whatever my vision is will collapse, but that's an illusion. And, and so, yeah. That's that's what maybe speak to that a little bit more. That yeah. Uh, well, I think yeah. There's definitely some illusions, and I think the illusions are coming from what the society is saying. The the our education, our parents. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, we have ninety five percent of everything that we're doing that's unconscious or is 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 just habitual. It's yeah. habitual thinking, yeah. and so we're being driven by our subconscious most ninety five percent of the time. The beautiful thing is that we do have a conscious mind that is able to reject or accept any ideas. Uh, and then, you know, when we have a new idea that comes in, it goes into the subconscious and then the subconscious can usually, the subconscious will always accept, but they create some sort of a conflict. Yeah. So, because it's, it's, it's how you've been living for a long time. So uh, the way to change things and change the illusion is to impress a new idea with repetition. Yeah, and that's that's why you know the program that I'm in, the Proctor Gallagher, is is so so amazing, and that's and that's based on thinking, grow rich people that had a lot of success, and so it's like meditation, it's like everything. You know, I I couldn't even imagine that it, that I didn't think that repetition was so important because you know we go to the gym, we know that you're not going to change your muscles in one day, yep. but we read a book once, and that's it. <laughs> and then you know, we and and it's because we go to school we get information and then we're being tested once on it and then we move on yeah and we are being rewarded for gaining more information but we're not being rewarded for the application of that information mm. so so to change your subconscious mind and to change the illusions to impress new ideas and, uh, and then that's, that's why I'm fascinating about what I'm doing and helping the people to do that. And really we can do anything. Yeah. And the, the key, and, 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 you know, the fact that we think that there's not enough time or the, the you know, it's, it's pretty amazing when you ask questions, what, what is your concept of time? What is your concept of money? <clears throat> do you feel that you have enough, that money, making money is easy, you know, in society, it's no, you got to work hard. You're going to hustle. Yeah. You're going to do this. And the more and more I'm realizing with what I'm doing is it's all about the vibration. It's all about the being it's, it's a, uh, you're not gonna, and it's who you are that creates everything. It's the be, do, have equation versus the have, do, be. And what I mean by that is when I was young, I always felt that I would be someone once I have X, Y, Z, once I do this, and then I'm going to become happy. I'm going to become yeah. happy once I have the house, once I have the dog, the, the marriage yeah. and everything. But it's the other way around. Your being, the way you're, you are, is creating the type of actions that are going to lead to what you have later on. It's not the other way around. So mm -hmm. otherwise, if you're, if you're on the other side of the equation, then it's a chase. It's a, and then you, you go to the, the goalpost and then the whole journey is, is being miserable. I was one of them. You know, I, I, I was always, I stayed four years in a company for a bonus and I was miserable and it cost me, I'm pretty sure my first relationship, the, the, yeah. the, the marriage, because, you know, my flame was diminishing and diminishing, yeah. and diminishing instead of being happy in the journey. Yeah. And we don't know when that life is going to end. So that's why I was so passionate about, you know, make, make, make it living, not being scared of dying, being scared of not living. Yeah. While you're here. <clears throat> and I think it's really, really important. That's why. And, and I have a friend that passed away two weeks ago, actually on my birthday. Mm. And uh, I'm going to try not to be emotional, but it was, uh, you know, two weeks before that uh, we had a conversation and I know that it was the last one because, you know, he had cancer for two years mm. and, uh, and I wanted him to maybe participate into a, what we call a remote healing. Mm -hmm. so it's sending energy from different people to him and he said i'm good i don't need this i'm like so what's going on he's like well you know what i think i'm, I'm i think i'm done i think mm -hmm. i 
I'm just sick of, of, of being sick. And uh, I've had a good life. You know, I've, there's, of course, there's things that I wish I had, like a family and kids. But, you know, for the most part, I'm pretty happy with what, I, what, I, what I've done. And so imagine having a conversation with your best friend and you just, you know, it's the last one. So every second counts, right? So you're, and then I'm, I, it was a beautiful conversation, human conversation where I said, so what do you, uh, what do you recommend? Like if you had to send a message to the whole world, what, what would it be for you? And he said, well, just be yourself. Just be yourself. You're authentic. He said, don't let anyone sway you or anything sway you from your path. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and for him, he, see, he told me the story. And his name is Neil Anderson. And he told me the story when he was young. And he used to go back at, at, at home because his mom was asking him to always go back at home before he would do anything else, playing or anything. And he said, at times when it was raining, I was watching a, a TV show. And I think he was in Scotland at the time. And the TV show was that there was a, a psychologist that was bringing some actors and I guess talking about some different concept and he was fascinated by it. He was fascinated. And he, he told his dad, he said, that's what I want to be. I want to be a psychologist. And his dad was more of an engineer type. He said, no, you know, you're either an engineer or a doctor or you're, you go in business. And so he ended up going into business and doing a lot of different things was successful. And then at one point he decided to be a psychologist and he did. And it was a really, really good one. And uh, so he followed his heart. And then later, his dad was proud of him. But mm-hmm. so that's, I think that's why you say, you know, don't let anyone sway you from your path. And the path is very unique to everyone. And then he also said, I would wake up every day and ask myself, how can I have a life of abundance and vitality? And then I said, uh, how do you define abundance? He said, well, that's, that's the beauty of life. You're the one that created this own definition. So it was, so to me, I say that because after that, they kind of gave me a, a kick in, in my butt to uh, refocus on my project of documentary on, on resilience element mm. and interviewing the people because life is, is so precious mm. and I want to live my life to the max and not let my fear, not let the society, the people, anything sway me from my path. And I think you really know what your path is when you ask yourself like this kind of fake life sentence of five years and it could be less, it could be more. And so really why are we here? Mm. Is that, is that to live in fear most of our time or more, most of our life or really go for it and, and do anything that we can to, to have a legacy, to have an impact, to help others and, and make, make something good out of, of our life. And that's why now I'm, that's that's my driver driver to <clears throat> honor what my friend was saying and just help people to live their best life with their dreams and if there's any obstacles they're going to know what the resilience element is and they're going to know the stories of people that against all of the odds they made it happen and then now there's no excuses you can use on the science you can use the stories and they can do anything so that's that's why i'm doing what i'm doing do you remember the point when neil um I guess left his business life to start his psychology. That I I I don't remember. I know that he just uh, there's a moment where I wish I knew the answer, but he just yeah. decided to go for because I, I think at one point you realize what, why am I doing what I'm doing, and so maybe for some Absolutely. people, you know, if they can ask themselves, is this really what I want? Have yeah. I borrowed that from somebody else? Is it love that? Is it my thing? Yeah. Or is it is somebody else, my parents, the society, whatever? Yeah. Because I believe that, you know, even my godfather told me when I was 16 and it was my birthday and he gave me a birthday card and he said, Francis, you know, now you're 16. That's awesome. And you're going to make decisions for, for, for your career. Please don't make a decision for the paycheck. Do what makes your heart come alive. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you'll be poor all your life. Mm-hmm. And and I didn't follow the advice. <laughs> right. <you know? laughs> I, I, I first time I had a job offer, two job offer. One was fifty five thousand, you know, twenty years ago, twenty more, years, and and then the other one thirty five. There's just twenty thousand difference, but you know, it felt 40 percent more. And international business uh, or international company, uh, multinational. Uh, great salary path, but 
it was selling electronic parts. I, I didn't care about electronic parts, but hey, you know, there's all that path versus another one, which was a smaller company traveling around the world for, I think it was dentistry, but, you know, I was passionate about traveling and the cultures and everything, but the salary is not good. Yeah. And so imagine if you take that same person, you have the one that's on the trajectory of fully living your passion, fully being alive every day, not being in jail, not dying uh, every day. And the other one that's alive, does what he love. And, and then you become an expert. You just, you, you, you're, you're so in love with what you do that, you know, your people are gravitating around you because you're the, you're, you're in joy. Your vibration is high. And, and, and 10 years later, I mean, money was not be, even be part of the equation. First of all, you're happy every day. And I would, I would probably guess that actually your fortune, whatever, how you call your fortune is, is way better. Like in terms of your health, your relationship, yeah. your, uh, maybe salary, maybe money, but you know, it's, and it, it doesn't even matter. So I discovered that card 20 years after <laughs> and uh, I'm like, wow. Okay. And then I think around that, Around that time, I decided to go for, and with the exercise of my coach and everything, I decided to go for my dreams. Mm. Do you think, um, it sounds to me like, uh, and my condolences for your, for your dear friend, Neil, um, what a, what a heavy moment. And I mean, and how powerful that you could be there and, and show up for those conversations too. I think that that's, uh, that's um it's a gift you know yeah and, and so thank you for sharing that um it's uh it's good it's good i mean it's those tragic circumstances that the beauty comes out of right yeah and you know the the funny thing is that he actually did die on my birthday so i don't think it's a it's a coincidence so i see it as a, a rebirthday now every year and uh and he took the time to even send like a, a message on, on Facebook, I guess maybe a couple hours, because I learned about it the day after. Yeah. <clears throat> so I knew that it would come. I didn't know when. Yeah. But yeah, what a beautiful gift he gave us or he gave me to uh, and my friends, because I talked about it. But, you know, he's. Yeah, that was very so, ins instrumental. Yes. Yeah, sounds like maybe up until that moment, you were sort of uh, lost sight of your vision for a minute and maybe uh, i mean i was i was recommitting to it but i think it's just like it's it's almost like the nail that just closed yeah. it. you know it's it's it was it was up in the air but now it's done <laughs> yes. you know it's yeah. now i know and uh and that's 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 his biggest gift yeah you know yeah yeah so at your website um francis Pichet.com and that's F R A N C I S P I C H E.com. It'll be in the show notes. Anybody can click, um, check it out. You have some great, a couple of cool interviews. There's that one interview with, uh, that is the pup. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. awesome is that? Um, but I'm just looking at your, um, you have extensive training and, 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 uh, coaching and personal development and all this stuff. And it sounds like currently the Proctor Gallagher Institute, is that Bob Proctor or is yeah, that? Yeah. yeah okay. Right. But Bob Proctor is behind with uh, Sandy Gallagher. So Sandy Gallagher was an attorney, uh, merger acquisition attorney, and she just wanted to expand uh, what Bob was teaching. And so right now, thanks to her and the merge of this organization, they're in more than 90 countries. And so yes. uh, it's a ripple effect of, and I, uh, to be honest, the only thing that I knew about Bob to me in my mind was the movie, The Secret. The Secret. And, and I felt that I wasn't sure if I really liked uh, Bob. I knew I had a lot of respect, but I, but now when I, when I discovered what he's talking about and merging what I've learned from Dr. Joel Dispenza and, and really talk, it's almost like a bridge of what I would call the 3D society, you know, the, hustling and everything in a 5d which is you know you you tap into this field of consciousness and now magic starts to happen and now it's quantum leaps it's not uh you got to work hard for it that's the merge that he has so he so it felt that it was me it was me totally and and all the language that he's using in terms of the it's really a mindset program business wealth you however you want to call it but it was it was me 
And yeah. so I felt equipped to talk about it, coach it right away. And, uh, and I really underestimated how powerful it is until, you know, I started to do the program. I'm the product of the product, you know, and, yeah. and I'm a consultant and I apply and that's, and, and to me, I think I see him as a, as a, almost a, a grandpa, you know, the grandpa had a lot of success. He followed a, a mentor called Earl Nightingale, who had a lot of success, who was talking about the thinking, thinking to, uh, in, thinking thinking grow rich book mm -hmm. and so you know of course these guys there's a reason why they were successful and so what earl nightingale told bob was do what i say until you can prove me wrong mm -hmm. and and then to me it was okay so if bob did what he said and then i'm gonna do what bob is asking me to do yeah and uh and i don't question it and it, it works. It's yeah. that's why, you know, in terms of goals, or, you know, we're not even asking people to think about, hey, how can you improve by 20% or 15%? They're saying, you know, you take your monthly, you know, your annual income and convert it into annual uh, monthly income. Yeah. So it's 12 times more. And, and the funny thing is that once you start to think that way and you raise your vibration to that level, your ideas are completely different. Yeah. If I ask you, like, how can you improve your business by 10% or how can you 10 X your business? The ideas are not the same. And, yeah. and, you know, everything that comes now is bigger ideas, bigger ways mm. to accomplish it. And so now all of a sudden it's possible. Mm. It's completely possible. And, and, and the only reason why it's not possible is because of what we call the paradigms. And the paradigm is all your subconscious that you've been thinking about for a while. And so from people that they would probably say it's impossible. 10, 10x it's impossible but there's million ways to create abundance yeah you know people even the ones that have a salary why yeah. because you, you can start to uh, do what you love and uh, and and do offer a service and you're gonna be rewarded for it you can es establish a store you can there's so many ways so many to ways. do it right yeah and but, yeah. but yeah yeah I was gonna say it uh, it um, those ways are expanding exponentially just with technology and all this stuff. And, and there's, there's a thirst for, for that information too, or for, yeah. Um, I, I, um, you did some landmark stuff too. I see you've done a yeah. bunch of stuff, some Tony <laughs> Robbins. Uh, uh, I'm just, you know, uh, looking on your, on your sort of your history of, of coaching and your passion for it and you love it clearly. And it's, and it, it's fun. It's fun to um, talk to you because, you know, you, you definitely have a, a presence and, and, and that calmness that you're talking about and that being in the moment is, is very evident. And it'll be fun to see for people if it, if it transfers through, through the podcast, right. No, um, so I just want to acknowledge that. So thank you for that. But I have, I, I, what I'm thinking is maybe you could speak to this quick. So somebody is in that spot where, where maybe there's a breakup in their life, right? That, that, the, the woman of their dreams evaporated mm -hmm. or the man did, or, you know, you've mm -hmm. been through a couple of heavy breakups mm -hmm. along the way. Um, or perhaps there's that burnout moment, um, that burnout moment at work or career or what have you. Um, and it's like, we know things have got to change for some of us, right? Some people not, but some of us, it's like, wait, things have to go a different way. And thinking of your resilience element and your, you know, your clarity, conviction, uh, certainty, commitment, and courage. If someone's on the very front end of that, right? Mm -hmm. So someone's like, at the breaking point and they're like aware and ready to like maybe plow forward in a new direction or take a leap or something like that. Like what, give me some like tangible workable tools, like a okay. few things you're like, all right, if someone's in that spot and they know they're ready to change or things have got to give, like give me something that somebody it's on the very yeah. front of end of that can do. <clears throat> well, I think I'm going to give, um, I'd love to give a lot. I mean, I'm going to give uh, what I always feel is a foundation of everything for before we even start to talk about the five components. And uh, those are very, and that's, that's, 
if you if people would be my clients, they'd be surprised how often we would actually go back to that basic and that foundation. Yeah. And so there's a couple of things that, that I think are very important. One uh, is is to say there's a book called The Way of Mastery. And uh, one of the things that they mentioned is that, and I think Landmark would probably touch on that as well, is that all events are neutral. Okay. Love so that. Let that sink for a second. So what if I ask you, what do you think that means? Yeah, to me, that's like that's that's this idea that the breakup was bad, but perhaps it's neutral. Neither good nor bad. It just is. Everything, right? yeah, everything is. Everything is just neutral. And so because I'm I mean, maybe people are not gonna see it, but they can imagine in their mind. So I have a cup and there's a cup that has my logo on it and then you yeah. see uh something black and white and then on the other side that same cup there's it's only black so if i if i would ask someone like so what do you see like what colors do you see and they'd say well i see white and black and like, what are you talking about this is not white and black this is this is black and you're like what are you talking about and then and then you just realize that you know i turn it on the other side and then like oh yeah it's black you know, but it's just because it's a different angle. It's a different perception. Yeah. So, so what's in the way of something that's art? Like the cup is the cup. The cup is just a cup. Like an accident is an accident. A breakup is a breakup. Everything is, is just is. But then you have, first of all, the first filter is perception. So all, if I look it at a different angle, then I would discover that, oh, you're right. Like it's actually white and black. But then on top of it, there's also meaning. And so if I show you, if someone says, you know that I don't like to mix white and black together, they, oh, what are you talking? You're making me mad right now. You know, I hate that. And I'm, what are you talking about? This is only black. No, it's white and black. And so now all of a sudden, like the meaning on top of it is huge. Yeah. So, you know, and then so it, imagine your mom is saying, Misha, you're, you're a piece of nothing. Yeah. How would you feel? And then there's a two-year-old that says exactly the same thing. You are just a piece of, yeah. you would probably laugh. It's exactly yes. the same, but you know, all of a sudden the meaning, because it's your mom and now it's big thing. You know, and what the, like now it hurts your, your, your heart, but yeah. essentially it's all the same. It's, it's just all events are neutral. So the beauty of that is that now that we know it, we can choose, we can choose, this is very important what I'm saying, choosing the perception, choosing the meaning, and then it, it's a different story. And it, so for someone that had a, a breakup, and I think what's also important, what I've learned with the Vipassana meditation and observing the thoughts and, and knowing that everything is impermanent is to go through the pain really go through it feel it you know i remember when another relationship where i wasn't sure if the person was cheating on me or not and i remember having this meditation and i decided to go through it like let's say okay let's let's go through the graphic of her cheating on me. let's let's go like instead of resisting because the resistance is just creating this pain even longer so now i decide okay i'm gonna go through it because I had this experience in my body of having the pain during the meditation and I went through it and I lived and I felt the sensation, felt the sensation fully. And it's fascinating. Like, Whoa, this is intense. Wow. And, uh, and then eventually it evaporated. Yeah. So it was, it was an amazing learning experience. So I decided to go through this visual. Okay. Let's say she's cheating on me and everything. But then I realized, is this really about me? Is she really considering me in the whole, if that, if that would happen, would she even say, I'm going to do that against Francis. You know, I'm just totally going to piss him off. And, but it has nothing to do with my value. It has nothing. That would be her decision to do something because of whatever the perception and the meaning she, she had. Yeah. It had no, but so then when I discovered that, I felt, well, oh, it doesn't even matter. What I know is that if she does it, then it would be over because that's not my value, but it has nothing to do with my value, my worth. Yeah. So, so, so now that I know it, I, I just, and then as soon as this meditation was over, I remember that the little inner voice was, you got it. You got it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't it's, matter. and then five minutes after she called and she broke up. <laughs> 
<laughs> so so I had the most beautiful meditation right on time. It's almost like, yeah, you got it. Exercise test done. Move on. <clears throat> oh, good. And she did, in fact, uh, was with someone that I thought that maybe there was something. But and you know what? It didn't matter because I felt, well, so of it. course, it's not. I'm happy for her. I'm really happy because mm-hmm. this is a match for her, not a match for me. Yeah. And uh, so the first that's just the first foundation of saying, you know, all events are neutral. Uh, and choosing so you know it's uh, when people say it's in a language your language is a dead giveaway of your belief so if you say uh, hey misha you want to go to my party you're like uh, i might i might you're like i might what is that so it's not commitment and a lot of people are keeping their option b all open but you're not committing to anything and so it's uh and or people would say i have to do something i gotta do something it's basically being a victim of not taking ownership of, of what you really want. Mm. It's not true that you have to do something because it's actually a choice. You know, mm. I, I have to work. No, you don't. You don't. If you don't want to work, you don't. Well, there's a consequence to it, but you choose. Yeah. It's better to say I choose something versus I have to. Uh, so, cause now this thing is bigger than you. So that's another distinction. So when I hear my clients, I say, Hey, Hey, what I choose. Yeah. And choose is now this is beautiful because you feel empowered right away. You're mm-hmm. choosing something. Nobody's telling you what to do. You're choosing, you're choosing your perception. You're choosing the meaning you're choosing all the time. And if you don't choose, if you don't do anything, you choose not to do anything. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then the, uh, another last aspect is, and Einstein said the most important question that people can ask themselves is, do I believe that God or the universe is benevolent? So imagine how you live your life when you think that life is bad. Life can always have catastrophes and setbacks and it's not, it's a, it's a bad world versus I believe that everything is benevolent. So that means that now when I have a challenge, I know that this is for my highest good. Mm. It's a very different way to live life. Yeah, and it's and in some ways, and that happened to me a couple times. Is that when something happens out of nowhere, I'm almost excited because I'm thinking, well, the universe, God is is really helping me. Is saying, hey, sorry, you're gonna you're gonna fall right now. You're really going in the wrong direction. I gotta help you, <laughs> bam! And that's what happened to me. Like I mean, three yeah. months before the wedding, because I was on the verge of conti- like really pleasing. Uh, mm not being happy and deciding that this is how I would live my life. And I would have been miserable, probably fight all the time in front of kids. And that's not good and be, and really not be happy and maybe die before. So who knows, but Give the point yourself is, a heart is that, attack. yeah, it was, it was a gift. It was a real, so when you see, and that's what I love also from Bob Proctor, he said, I've never learned anything from my failures. Uh, sorry, my, from my wins. I've never learned anything from my wins but I've yeah. learned so much from my failures. That's why I love failures as much as my win. Mm. That's a beautiful way of looking at things, right? So now you're saying, well, everything's for my is good. I believe the universe is benevolent. So I accept it. I embrace it. I go through my pain and then I'm free on the other side. Yeah. And uh, so that's kind of the foundation, I would say, for anything that happens before I started working with anyone. It's to really grasp these concepts. And then, of course, you know, in conversations weeks later, something would happen and they would just be upset. And so oh, I was so upset that this person did that. I'm like, what? All events are neutral. And, uh, uh, so now with that, you go back and you go back to the event and you now you work on the beliefs. Where is this belief coming from? Mm. And you kind of tweak it. And mm. you and that's how I know that for me, I think one of my strengths is I can unlock someone pretty fast. Mm. So in an hour, you know, I can do something. That's, that's why I love what I do. That's why there's a, a premium to what I do as well, because I, I can really get people on luck fast. Yeah. And I think it's because, I mean, I've had these, these problems in my life, uh, either breakups or uh, financially, uh, you know, and I talk about it in the, uh, what I called, uh, it's a book that was from J.B. Owen. And uh, we became bestseller with a compilation book, and it was called uh, Ignite Possibilities. Yeah. And uh, 
And so I know what it is to sometimes go to the cashier and you, you don't know if it's, you're going to be able to pay. And it's an awful feeling, a very yeah. awful feeling. So another thing that I would say for as an advice to people is really pay attention where you put your, your attention because that's where you put your energy. And so are you focusing on the lack? Are you always in fear? Or you're like, okay, that's enough. I don't think that it serves me anymore. Now I'm going to create. I'm going to choose to put my focus on mm. abundance on ways to generate uh, and to generate it. And, and because when you put your attention to that, that's what you manifest. That's your vibration versus really saying, I believe in myself. I believe I can do this. I'm going to get out of it and I'm, I'm going to succeed. And that's mm-hmm. all I put my attention to it. And that's because everyone, I see a book right now, it's called The Invisible Power from uh, Geneviève Beran, I think. Uh, but the point is, is that we all have this power that's accessible to everyone. There's a power that exists that help, helps us to take this oxygen in our lungs. Where is that coming from? Yeah. There's something that grows trees, that grows flowers. And it's really effortless for trees and flowers to grow. They, they're not resisting it. They're actually using the power. So yeah. the beautiful thing is that we all have access to the same power. So why is it that some people are able to succeed so much and some don't? There's only one common denominator and that's you. <laughs> so that means that you, the beautiful thing is now you can reassess and say, oh, I'm, I'm the one that created it. And I could be the one that creates something new. Yeah. And that's why it's so fascinating. And I, I love, I love working on mindset. I love that. Hold one second. Yeah. Hold one second. Ignite happiness. Yes. This is the book. Uh, that was ignite possibilities, but oh, you were in the, Ign- yeah. Oh, you were in Ignite well, Possibilities. Ignite Possibilities and also Ignite uh, Your Inner Spirit. So I've had the chance to be in two books. And one is relating the, the story of my plant medicine in Peru uh, and the lessons, very powerful lessons that I've learned. And then the other one is, is really about 2020, what happened and the business partners that faltered into their commitment that put me in a situation financial situation with that that was not easy and i realized at the end of it i'm summarizing that i didn't act in the beginning to ask my partners to keep their commitment because I, it was out of fear mm. but what i what it gave me after the whole year is that i am a creator and i could have created that i had the power to create from the get go so i i like to say you either wait or you create it's really just that you mm. wait or you create. So you don't like this situation while well, you're waiting. So what do you want to do? Mm. And I was waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And then to realize that <laughs> I could have created the, this conversation from the get go, my fear manifested. They mm. didn't pay. They didn't do anything. I could have just acted out of power and, and love and, and just say, this is not acceptable. If you want to work with this project, this is how it works. I don't want, I don't want to hate you. It's, it's all good. You just tell me what's your choice. I'm choosing that you yeah. make a choice. I you either it. keep your commitment or you're out. But, you know, your beauty is you choose. Which one do you want? Because working with me, that's how it's going to work. I'm, I'm, we're going to keep our commitment. So, hey, I don't want to force you anything. You, you choose. Which one do you want? And that's the conversation it. I had at the end. But I waited a whole year. And so it's that's the why I say fulfilling prophecy yeah. that you're talking about. Exactly. So, yeah. and that's also where you put your attention, right? So yeah. I was trying to be nice the whole year and, but, you know, and, and I have absolutely no problem with these people at all. Actually, I have a lot of compassion because it gave me the, one of the most beautiful lessons. I know that now I can create anything really. And so it was, uh, uh, $190,000 lessons, <laughs> but, but, but you know what? I know I have the power to create millions. So it doesn't matter. It Was doesn't. that everything you had at that point? Oh yeah. I mean, and you know, I still owe some money. That's not, uh, but the beauty is that I know I have the power of creation. That's yeah. why, I mean, I, I feel that I've had a lot of uh, gamut of different emotions and different events in my life that I feel that I I'm thanking God and the universe that I, I had had, like, I mean, at first I remember days where I was cursing, but now I know that this was for my highest good. I know that you, yeah, you can, have can compa- help people. Yeah. And you can have compassion for the situation and the people are within it, which is yeah. what a gift is that. So what year yeah. did that go down? 
2020 was really when things didn't go as much as, as well as I wanted. <laughs> but then, right. you know, and I'm laughing. This is good. This is a good sign. <laughs> yeah, right. You can talk. About I'm laughing it. about it now. This is great. Like I've healed. Uh, yeah. But, you know, at the end of 2020, then, you know, I think I just decided and I'll give you another example. You know, sometimes we I had my pension uh, funds that I created a long time ago when I was a salaried person. And uh, at the end of the year, I really wanted to go do uh, the event with Joe Dispenza. And then I didn't have the money. So here's another gift I'm going to tell people is that you can never, ever, ever say, I cannot afford it. Yeah. It's impossible. So you could, you could say you don't have the money in your bank account. That's, that's true. That's a fact. But to say that you cannot afford it, the best story that I've had for this is my friend, Chris Doris, who's a, a mental toughness coach. And he was telling about his story. But basically, he had a challenge and he didn't have the money. But once you realize that you, you are resourceful, that means you can afford everything. Because what's in the way is maybe just you making a bold request. Because if I say, hey, Misha, you know, your best friend's going to die tomorrow if you don't bring $50,000 by tomorrow at 10 a.m., what would you do? Yeah, I'm going to go. You know, I'm going to start talking to people and I'm going to rally the troops, right? You would do anything. Right. Yeah. So, so that's what's available for everyone. You yeah. can do that. And so, uh, so what I, so what happened is that for me, I had this pension fund, but then I realized that the reason why I didn't want to use it is because unconsciously I felt that I could not be able to replenish it. Mm. And then I thought, this is a BS, BS belief. No, mm. if I really believe in myself, of course I will be able to replenish it back. So yes, I'm going. And, and, and then my life changed. Because I did it in December, ended up staying a month in, in, uh, in uh, Mexico, met beautiful, amazing souls, met the, one of the same guy uh, two weeks, uh, two months after, who is the one that introduced me to the program that I'm in right now. And I have friends that are completely amazing. And it just gave me so much more abundance. And, and, and I even went to Costa Rica in, in uh, April this year. And so there's a lot of things that I've done. And it I, I think it would have not been possible for me without going to that event, which was one week. But the point is, is that I decided to, to believe in myself and say, no, if I know that I, that it, let's say, let's pick a number, a million dollar, why would I be afraid to spend 10 K if I know, really know that I'd be able to make a million. So yes. one of the things that people do is that they, they look at what they're losing yeah. versus what they're going to get. And sometimes what we're going to get, we don't know exactly. That's the unknown, which is why we yeah. would rather just not take that leap because I know what I'm losing, but I'm not quite sure exactly what I'm going to get. And yeah. the only person that can help you to do that is you to believe internally that it's possible because everything is created twice, once in your mind and then outside. It's not the phone was not created physically and then oh you know this is a phone now we're going to create the phone no it the phone was created inside same thing with the plane you know they were crazy at the time but they had yeah. the creation inside them and then it became a manifestation yeah so yeah i think hopefully that's a lot of value for the oh, listeners because I, I mean there's there's a lot of different concepts that were already talked about yeah no that's beautiful everything's created twice i'm going to take that in um your language, you said this a few minutes ago, but your language is a dead giveaway of your beliefs. Nice. Love that. Um, I liked what you said too about, about when you were talking about your pension and you're like, well, I, I, because I, I can have the propensity to do that too. I'm like, well, I've got some resources. If I invest it here, I'm, I'm, I'm in the, the, um, you know, the limited mindset of, of, well, I won't have it anymore versus, and I can't replenish it versus look at the, what it, the opportunity that it's going to create for you. And perhaps it might not even be financial replenishment, but the yeah, look, spiritual the awareness friendships, or friendships yeah. or yeah. Lifelong or uh, yeah. A loving relationship. Or yeah. whatever. I mean, I mean, I, I've sold my, my condo in Vancouver, years ago and you know if i look at 
the cost of opportunity and the and what it's worth now. I mean, everything that I've done so far is probably well over a million something of of things that I didn't get like the salary that I used to have and everything. Yeah. But now it's it's tr- like the it's I turned the corner and now it's being accelerated, and I know I'm going to get it ten times that. Yeah, and so being in that moment where you know, if, let's say there's a span of 10 years and you're in this mud yes of course it feels like it's it's not good but you don't know yet until you've learned all the lessons and i that's why i firmly believe that i've had so many different situations and i can help so many people yeah and and now with the documentary which will be given to people for at large and my goal is to make it global so that uh, we we know our inner power we can reawaken our inner power. Yeah, it's great. So ignite possibilities and ignite. What was the other one that you were uh, in? in your inner spirit, inner spirit. Um, and you know, I, and I'd love to, to give a, your gift for, for the listeners. I mean, I created like a little PDF so they can have my chapter. I can give it to you guys Yeah, and they can read it. So uh, you just, that would be my pleasure. Perfect. We could put uh, like a link in the show notes yep. where someone could download it, for example, yep. or yep. is that, or, okay, that'd yep. be great. Um, so you had, you'd mentioned, so the story that's uh, where you've lost everything in effect by delaying conversations that, if I heard you say this correctly, you had some fears, you were in a business relationship and you let your fears hold you back from having necessary conversations mm-hmm. um which 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 book is that story in uh this one is uh, in my possibilities because okay. i call it uh, awakening your creator within because <clears throat> you have this power of creation it's really yeah. you have it so you 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 had mentioned <laughs> and I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but you you were like, yeah, I was I was at the grocery store or talking to the cashier. How am I going to pay for this? You had some of those moments. I had those moments where I was just wishing that it would go through. Yeah. And, you know, surprises where it's, you know, they say, no, it's not working. And you're like, what the? And then because they charge interest and I was always paying on time and, you know, having credit card debts and all of it. So it's it's not not a good vibration definitely not a good vibration and i had to go through that to yeah. understand that you know at one point you, you make a decision you're like no this is not how i'm feeling this is not my personality i'm, I'm better than that and uh, and that's where you start to build, to work on your being because the being like it's a different type of person to go to the store and be in fear or the one that unconsciously truly believe that you're going to get it all back so it doesn't matter that you're spending money because you know you will make some money versus yeah. being in fear and just you know like and and i and i know like it can be stuck in that for a while but then you realize what am i saying to myself do i really believe that i have all the skills and the abilities to get more than that mm-hmm. and if you do then your being is different now you're acting out of 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 love you're acting out of faith and then you know that what you have to offer is so big that's why you know as soon as you make that click of being you can all of a sudden even ask for a raise or yeah. a change job because you know your worth and all of a sudden boom you make ten thousand dollars more because you believe in yourself I, yeah. I mean i have a friend i think he told me that you know if you look at the market he knew that it would be he was 30 percent lower than what he was supposed to be paid 30 percent so if it's a salary of a hundred, that's thirty thousand. Yeah. So imagine elevating your being to a point that you know your value and you're going to ask for it because of course you bring value. Of course yeah. you bring, and then by default you're going to be rewarded for it. Yeah. And so they say that there's a beautiful saying that said you can never outperform your self-image. Yeah. You can never outperform your paradigm. If your paradigm are keeping you at this level of temperature like a thermostat, yeah. that's where you are. You're going to go a little bit above, maybe a little bit below, but you will always be on that line yeah. until you change the temperature, until you change and you rewire your brain and with new beliefs, then you're going to, that's where you're going to go. And, uh, and by the way, I just want to make sure, because in, in the integrity of uh, what I said with uh, uh, your language is that giveaway of your belief, that's, that's coming from my friend, Chris Doris, and he's an amazing mind to man. And like the way he says it, I just loved it. So I borrowed it. So it's a uh, Chris Doris, a mental toughness coach as well. 
but yeah, so you can never outperform your paradigms. Yeah. So the, the key is really to change your paradigms and then you change all your life because your paradigms are, are driving the way you use your time, the way you're, you have your relationship, the way you have your belief about money, everything. So yeah. that's fascinating. That's beautiful. We can change all that. Yeah. How cool is that? I, we could keep going and going and going. Um, I think I covered most of, I would love to talk more about JB and that experience, but we can save that for round two. Um, yeah. Cause how cool is that, that you, <laughs> yeah. you got to participate in that in a couple of books. And I think what's interesting there too, are sort of what are the, was there financial benefits from that? Not that there should have been, I was just my own curiosity. I'm like, oh, I'll that's do a quick, quick story is that, yeah. you know, I decided to uh, take a leap of faith. And that was again, like at the time that I owed a lot of money and, uh, but I, but I, and I was also working on a visa to, to be in the United States. And so I, before I got the visa, I couldn't generate business in USA. It would have been illegal. So I knew that all I could do is networking or do something else. And so there was a moment where, I was uh, still in real estate and I was waiting for a deal to come through. And, uh, and then I had the idea, I'm just going to go to Peru and do this, this ayahuasca ceremony. The deal came out of nowhere and then it was a, a chance for me to go, but it was not confirmed yet. And I was waiting for it and I was in fear of if it doesn't go, then I owe 6,000. I could have the six and then it doesn't cost me anything. What am I doing? And I was riveted on my screen for an hour, you know, when the come down and all my credit card information was done. All I had to do is click, but I wasn't sure. And I'm like, oh, and then I decided to close my computer, go to the washroom or the restroom. And then in the restroom, I thought, oh my God, you're doing the same thing. Like 20 years ago, you decided to go for a job for the money. You canceled your trip to go to Peru and you didn't see the Machu Picchu. Now it's available. You're using the same argument, same thing, money, 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 money. And then I felt, you know what? I want to break free of that. And I'm doing it. So I decided I reopened my computer as soon as I was out, went as the, uh, where the check-in uh, counter is, thing, and I did it. And then my flight ticket was booked. Half an hour after, boom, I got like a confirmation on the deal. So I was rewarded. So this is a very important thing is that we wait for things, but sometimes we just need to do the sleep of faith and we're being rewarded by it after. Love and that. the reward was that I went to do the plant medicine ceremony in Peru. And in the ceremony, I got the idea because I met JB only once, one time before. And the, 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 what I got as an inner voice was, you talk about this experience. You talk to JB and you tell her you're in the book. And I was very unapologetic about it. I just said, hey, JB, I'm inside your book. What's the next step? I didn't even say, can I please? She said, it, it, I guess with that level of certainty yes. and, and vibration, she said, all, all right, so which one do you want? And I said, which one do you have? And I, it was uh, the concept that I had in, during the plant ceremony was being the Viking, you know, re, like using your voice and everything. And I so, uh, she said, well, we have uh, Ignite the Warrior Soul available. And I felt, wow, this is exactly in line with my, the Viking thing and everything. So I, and that's how, that's how it happened. And then it morphed into inner spirit. Yeah. But that's how, that's how I, I, I did it. It was just for me out of the, the, the inspiration to, to talk about the message that was really powerful in, in that ceremony. Uh, and I think people would enjoy that one too. Yeah. So maybe I can give two, two, two links and, you know, they can choose which one they want. But uh, love yeah, it. so that's how it happened. And then, you know, since I've done one book, then GB in, invited me to do another and that's how it, it rolled out. So the point is by saying yes to life, by, by having faith, taking a leap of faith, it leads to different things and it could be friendship. It could be a book, but, uh, and I've done that le recently, two weeks ago, I decided to take a leap of faith, go to Mexico to celebrate birthday. And, and the amount of things that I would have missed Without going there, I said yes to an opportunity. I met new friends. It's unbelievable. So life is meant to be lived, yeah. not not being afraid. And so I honored Neil on that. And it was just being your true authentic self and not let anything or anyone sway you from your path. So yeah. obstacles, setbacks, whatever it is, we have the power to create. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. Um yeah, I think we've we've covered most of the stuff. Thank you. We could go on and on about your your experience with JB, but I think that that I think this is a good spot to end, uh, mm -hmm. Francis. Um, was there anything that you wanted to add that maybe we missed or? 
No, I think we've covered a lot of ground. And I would just say uh, to people, be, you know, believe in yourself, believe in yourself. Everything is available. And if you think it's not, it's just because it's a, it's a paradigm. That's all. Mm -hmm. You can just work on it. I know I can help them in many different ways and I'd be more than honored to help them. And, you know, just, just so they remember they, they can do anything and yeah. you can just watch stories of multitude of people that either on their physical side or the business side or whatever happened, they were able to bounce forward mm -hmm. and they can, everyone can. Yeah. It's beautiful. Um, thank you for that. Again, everybody, you can find Francis at F A R N F R A N C I S P I C H E dot com. Uh, we'll put the link in the show notes and then we'll put two links for um, your sections of those two books, um, which are awesome books. I like, obviously, I have Ignite Happiness and there's great stories in there. So, um, yeah, I'm going to hit stop and then we'll say goodbye offline. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for spending time with me today. As someone who is committed to growth and service to this world, I so appreciate your willingness to come with me, go within, and serve our world through change. If you found value in this podcast and you know someone who can use this message, share this episode with them. Share it so our mission can be achieved one episode at a time. And of course, subscribe so you can hear more. And lastly, for more resources on what has helped me on my journey and can help you on yours, go to belove.media forward slash resources. That's B-E-L-O-V-E dot media forward slash resources. Thank you again for listening.